Cars is one of Pixar's biggest franchises ever. It's the kind of movie series that'll charm anyone, from Owen Wilson's voice acting for Lightning McQueen to Sir Tomater's aloof character, you're in for a ride, pun intended, of hearty chuckles and emotional moments. In today's video, we're going to share all the secrets and Easter eggs you might have missed while watching Cars. First up, John Ratzenberger. What's a Pixar movie without its fair share of Easter eggs? Pixar released its first ever animated feature film in 1995, and you guessed it, it's none other than the famous Toy Story. There's a very quirky character in that movie that goes by the name Ham. He's the piggy bank who is always speaking the truth about his other toy friends. Guess what? Ham's voice acting is done by John Ratzenberger. So there you have it. Ever since Pixar released Toy Story, they've used John's voice in almost every single animated movie after that. Owing to this little Pixar tradition, of course, John makes his usual appearance in Cars as well. He's the voice behind Mac. Mac may be some ordinary supporting character in the movie who mostly plays the part of McQueen's loyal transporter, but John's warm and calm voices offers Mac's character a charming friendliness. It's a tiny detail, but it makes you think of how Pixar has effortlessly maintained this tradition of casting John for every single Pixar movie since 1995. That's one pretty long tradition, huh? Next, we have the sneaky references to other Pixar movies. A Pixar movie doesn't feel like a Pixar movie if they don't put a bunch of sneaky references to other movies made by the studio. There have been so many clever nods to different Pixar movies in the Cars franchise as well. Let's dive into a couple or more of these now. In Toy Story, Woody and Buzz are seen using a Pizza Planet delivery truck. It's become kind of an inside joke at Pixar to feature that truck in almost every Pixar movie by now. In Cars, the truck's given life, and you can spot him in the audience during the Piston Cup. How carefully they blended it with the rest of the cars. That's not the only Toy Story reference in Cars, people. Closely inspect the wheels on Lightning McQueen, and you'll see how they're stamped Lightyear. Such an obvious reference to the character Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. But that's not it. When you look even more closely, you'll find that on the tires there's an inscription that reads Sector 4 Gamma Quadrant. Guess where Buzz said he was stationed? That's right, it was the very same sector. Dang, these Pixar people are getting too creative with these sneaky references. We're pretty sure a lot of you definitely missed this one reference to Brave. In Cars 2, there's a scene where all the cars are gathered together in a pub in London. On the walls of this boisterous pub, if you have a really close look, there's a tapestry. You must be thinking, what's so special? about a tapestry? Well, this tapestry depicts the Dunbrock family from Brave, a 2012 Pixar movie. Here's the catch, though. The family's shown as their car versions. That should give you a good chuckle. Another really amazing reference in Cars 2 that'll probably blow your mind is a reference to Ratatouille. When everyone goes to Paris, there's a scene that pans into one of the restaurants. There's a graphic of a car wearing a chef's hat and holding two gasoline pumps. The name of the restaurant is Gastos. Ring any bells? Well, the restaurant in Ratatouille is Gustos. Now, this isn't just just a reference. It's some amazing wordplay as well. Mind blown, definitely. Cars 3 came out in 2017, and of course, it's just as littered with references to other animated movies. One of these references is to Coco. It happened when one of the racers was feeling rather homesick, and as a way of making him feel better, Cruz Ramirez showed him a photograph of his home. On seeing the photograph, the car exclaims, Santa Cecilia, mi pueblo. Guess why Santa Cecilia is a clever reference? Because that's the place where Coco is set. Pretty freaking clever. Now, for other stuff related to the Cars universe itself. Writer and director John Lasseter has created a world that's entirely about cars, and when you have a whole franchise about them, it's obvious everything's going to pretty much be related to cars. In the first installment of the franchise, there's a scene where Sally is in front of a shelf filled with all kinds of odds and ends. In the same shelf, you'll find there are picture frames of the Stonehenge and the pyramids. But wait, that's not all. These two pictures are nothing like the actual Stonehenge and the pyramids. They're shaped like traffic cones instead. Dead. Isn't that a really nice touch? After all, it's a movie about cars, so everything about cars is justified. Take a closer look at the poster for Cars 2. At a glance, it's pretty simple. We have all the important characters lined up at the front, grinning at us, giving us smiles and smirks. Behind them, there's a map of the world. That's not how the map really looks, because if you give it an even closer look, you'll see that on the left of the map, there's an outline of a country. It's shaped like a car. Of course, how could they not include a car-shaped country in this world of cars? The attention to detail in these movies is is truly remarkable. For example, there's a scene in the first movie where Mater and Doc Hudson are watching McQueen race, and the sky behind them is full of clouds. They aren't any ordinary clouds, though. They're shaped like tire tracks. Similarly, in Cars 2, when McQueen and Mater are driving back to Radiator Springs, they pass by a drive-in theater, and the movie being played happens to be The Incredimobiles. Such a crazy good pun, and a witty nod to The Incredibles. Up next, things you'll only notice as an adult. Don't worry, Cars isn't an inappropriate 
appropriate movie. There are no openly dirty jokes anywhere in the movies. Most of the humor is pretty subtle, and it's something you'll have to pay attention to if you're older. In the beginning of the first movie, McQueen has a pretty big victory. He's also a really famous race car. Its obvious fame brings in plenty of fans. Right after his win, two cars named Mia and Tia approach him and claim to be his biggest fans, and then proceed to flash their headlights. The way McQueen reacts to this should give you a hint about what it actually means. There's another scene where McQueen and Mac drive past a restaurant that goes by the name Top Down Truck Stop. That should tell you enough, but when you read that the restaurant's famous for its convertible waitresses, you know a convertible is the type of car where you take the top down, pretty apt name for a restaurant, that leads to how convertible waitresses are probably topless. What an odd thing for a movie mostly for kids. In one scene, you can see an advertisement for an ointment. This ointment is called Rusty's Medicated Bumper Ointment. You should know what that can possibly mean in this context. Now, onto the carefully chosen voice actors for the movie. It's pretty evident that the makers of Cars put a lot of thought into each detail about the movie. Even the voice actors for the movies were chosen with much care. All voice actors were chosen according to the characters they would be voicing. Doc Hudson, in the first movie, is voiced by the legendary Paul Newman. Paul's not just an actor, he was a professional race car driver as well. The pastel green hipster Volkswagen bus called Fillmore is voiced by George Carlin. In his lifetime, George was a famous comedian, as well as a countercultural icon. The people behind Cars took the casting decision seriously, it seems. Richard Petty voices the character of the champion race car called The King. You wouldn't be surprised to know that Petty himself is a NASCAR legend, and his nickname was The King, too. Finally, the inspiration for the movie. John Lasseter's motivation behind making a movie all about cars came from his own fascination with them. He mentioned how he's passionate about two things in his life, cars and animation. His passion for them led to the birth of the Cars franchise. That's not all, though. The Route 66 in the movie isn't entirely fiction. In fact, Lasseter recalled how he used to frequently travel on that highway as a kid. Sweet old nostalgia. Along the real Route 66, there's a small town called Kansas Springs. It seems this town might have been the inspiration behind the fictional town Radiator Springs. Lasseter also said that he always wanted to create a movie with cars as the main characters. While he watched the documentary Divided Highways with Joe Ramp, he felt incredibly inspired to start working on a movie that depicted the life of people in these small, often bypassed, highway towns. Of course, it was more appropriate to make the characters cars. That's how this incredible franchise came into existence. That's a wrap for this movie. Got any more questions about secret messages or Easter eggs found in the Cars movies? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.